inside another dimension, face battling barbarians and evil magic on a quest for adventure in a maze of monsters. Once you get into it, you'll never be the same. Hero Quest. Now with two new adventure packs, the legend grows. Hi, welcome back to Now Your Mother's Hobbies. Uh, I've got my camera fixed, we're all ready to go, and our first video back is Hero Quest Dread Warriors. Look at this guy. Quite different from the classic style, but still a little bit the same. Here we got him all Zenithal primed up, ready to go. Uh, the artwork is pretty monotone, and we're going to try to do something to brighten it up and make it different, so let's get into that. Okay, so we're doing black armor. Here's our little thumb palette shot. Uh, for our black armor, we're going to do kind of a metallic. I did some experimenting with some other ones, like, oh, maybe I'll do my Black Templars kind of look with the, the blue shade and whatever. But I thought, let's go with a metallic one. Let's make this guy look a little different. Let's make him stand out because his colors are so simple. And I didn't want to do a lot of extra, like, detail stuff to make little things pop we're gonna make his whole body pop so we're starting with black templar and this is how we're gonna get a black steel look with our metallic just cover all the parts that uh are metal or are going to be this black steel uh you pick and choose there's there's a lot of stuff that can be armor on this guy and a lot of stuff that you could pick out as little details i picked out most of it most of the armor on this guy uh, I picked out to be this black steel. So you can pick and choose, you can do your own little things like, uh, oh, some gold is gonna be here, some gold is gonna be there. But yeah, paint his whole body <laughs> basically uh, black. And you can see here I'm, I'm doing some of the little finer details like the teeth and stuff. So his whole body, his whole, uh, his armor is what I chose to do this black steel. And here you go. This is uh, what it should look like when, you, when he's all covered, all blocked out. And here we go. We're taking some uh, gunmetal, our, our first level steel look, and we're going to dry brush that over all of this black steel. Um, we're going to give him a really dark metallic look, uh, which should end up pretty cool by the end, if I don't say so myself. So just go over all of the black again. We're just going to do a little light dry brush to get those metallic flakes in there. Really get it looking dark and burnished and charred and, and forged, right? So we're going we're gonna to do that. All right, here we got the chrome coming in. And we're just going to give that a light dusting. We are going to come back later and do some more like pinpoint precise ones. You'll see, you'll see the process. But for now, yeah, just do a little light dusting on all the, uh, the the topmost parts. So you can see I'm not really going in too deep on the legs, too deep on the body. It's just the topmost parts. All right, Nuln Oil Gloss, our favorite for metal. Just go in there and slop it on. Have it go into all the crecesses it'll add extra shine and because it's the gloss version it really it really goes into the recesses a lot more so it'll um make those shadows those recesses really darken and, and make the the ridges of the sculpt stand out and this this figure has a lot of ridges so we we kind of really need that um however we're doing it and in this case it's with our shade Okay, so here you can see, this is where we're coming back with those pinpoint highlight pricks with our chrome. So after that shade's dried, go in with a thinner brush, get your chrome, and, and pop in your highlights. Where do you want it to be the shiniest, shiniest of shiny? Uh, and so for me, I chose some of those details on the like demon armor face. Uh, I chose some of the details on the belt and stuff. You don't have to really get anything, you don't have to really get everything right um, because he's covered in metal and it's just gonna be too distracting so you really want to start to minimize and focus 
I'm not doing eyes on this guy. You can probably see that. I'm avoiding eyes on all these dudes. But what you can see is I'm doing highlights around where the eyes would be and, and details within the face of the helmet. Okay, cloth. That's the other thing that makes up the majority of this model. You can tell in the artwork, it's very flat. It's very monotone. Um, it's, it's, I don't know, it was a chore for me to really think of how do I make this stand out. And I tried to do a lot of research, but online, there's not a lot of Dread Warriors painted. Uh, there really isn't. And if there is, they're wild colors, which is cool, but wild. <laughs> So instead, um, I tried to just focus on um, the large parts of what we're doing, right? Try to focus on that. You can see that I did change from the art, the belly. The belly in the art is chainmail. I wanted that tabard to move up and then we have some pop of color in there. It's not so monotone, it's not so bland. We use that same red on the cape and we're gonna make the cape look different as well so it's not just all red, 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 black, 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 black. Everything on this guy, we're gonna try to make slightly a little different, slightly stand out while maintaining the integrity, quote unquote, of <laughs> the artwork. So here we go, uh, this is adding that difference to the cape. We're gonna make it look kinda old and ragged, rotted and burnt. So I got Black Templar, it's thinned down. Thin it down as much or as little as you want, but you're gonna start feathering it into the cape, into the body of the cape. Uh, stick to some of the creases um, to accentuate those crease lines, those fold lines. You can see I'm doing it there. Just stick into some of the creases and just feather it out a little bit. Uh, and then make the, the tippy tip tip tips uh, the darkest part. And you'll get this really cool rotted burnt cloak feel. On the underside as well, you'll see here, you can use this same uh, mix, the same technique as well to just accentuate some of the shadows uh, like there underneath uh, the Dread Warrior's back. So you can add uh, this rotty detail as well as accentuate some of the detail that's there. Here you can see I'm going back in and really making the tippy tip tips the darkest, the blackest, the chartest, the rottiest. And here we're using Mephisto on red. This is just to get some of that base color back. We're gonna avoid the shadows, uh, hit the, the mid, mid to highest points and, and bring back some of the, uh, I guess make it a flatter color, clean up any of the pooling, splotching, stuff like that. And on the cape, don't worry about being too precise. Use bold, broad strokes because it's all pockmarked and, and crazy anyway. Evil Sun Scarlet, this is a brighter red and we're gonna use this to highlight up on, on the, the skirt tabard. So on the belly and on the, the skirt. And remember if you do do any highlighting on the back, I can't remember if I do and I'm watching this, uh, but you, you don't have to do super detailed. You can do broad strokes because of all that pockmarked detail. On the belly, you can see that I'm doing a little bit of a, a stippling, stabbing, and that's just to give it a little more texture, right? It's uh, it's kind of flat up in there, and you know we're we're picking some of the the smallest volumes that are in there. And here we go for the highlights, the mega highlights, Dollar Store White, baby. Uh, we're using Dollar Store White here because if you put white in red, it tends to go pink, and it, it, red is traditionally a pretty tricky dicky to, to highlight you know you either use a pink and you try to make it look red or you go with orange well I found if you use a white especially on capes you get like a satiny look um, white surprisingly works well with highlighting reds uh, it, it works out pretty cool and I'm started to use it all right everything else that's everything else remaining everything left what is it what's what we make of it 
So for me, what I made of it is this symbol on the front is going to be gold for me. Uh, it could be bone for you. This whole thing could be a wildly different creature for everybody. Uh, the Dread Warriors have a complicated yet bland sculpt. Uh, I like it and I don't like it. It's really cool in some areas and I don't. Um, here you can see we're just doing our, our normal gold mix. So Gulliman, Retributor, uh, Reichland, Bing Bong, Bang Boom, Bob's your uncle, same as usual. Um, but yeah, these Dread Warriors, really, the sculpts are so kind of all over the place. Not ne necessarily a bad way. That you really could do anything. And, and I experimented a bunch with what the heck I was going to do with them. Was I going to go off the rails and do my own thing? Uh, was I going to try to match the art? How would trying to match the art even work? Because it's just so dark and muddy and... You know, I, I think I came up with a good mix for matching the art, and, and I got some interesting test minis, too, that can be, you know, some of the boss champions that you face in the quests. So, feel free to experiment yourself, you know, you don't have to do all your guys the same. Uh, I think having the boss champions, uh, the named monsters in the quests, uh, really allows for you to feel comfortable to experiment with hero quest. Uh, at least with one or two models, you know. Uh, you can really do whatever you'd like and boom now you got a cool champion guy right the one different dude who why is that guy different oh well he's he's sir gregor blackmane he's in quest number 10 stuff like that all right here is the weapon we're using basilicanum gray uh it might seem like why are you gonna do that are you just gonna do your normal metal mix well yes and no uh <laughs> <laughs> You'll see that the Basilicanum Gray is going to give it a, a different tone than the armor. Even if we do same similar steps to get our metallic on top, it is going to be a different tone. It will stand out differently. Uh, so here we go. You can see I'm using some of that gun metal just to go on top. We're going to make this handle metallic. We're going to do something different for the head, though. Go in with the dollar store white again. Boom. Highlight it up. Look how different that looks, right? It's a uh, surprisingly simple non-metallic metal. It is the the dollar store literally non-metallic metal. So just hit that uh, mace head with your your dollar store white and just bam, get it bright and shiny and cool looking. Here we got skeleton horde on the horns. I decided my horns on these guys were bone. Look at how cool that mace looks. I just I just gotta point that out. Look at how cool that looks. So simple. And then we got snake bite leather for the inside of the the shield. Now, if you actually look at the sculpt, there's some more detail on the shield. Ain't nobody got time for that. This is <laughs> these straps are not metal. I don't care. They are they're gonna be leather. Boom, done. Come in with the wraith bone once the the skull, the skeleton horde has uh, has dried. Going in there with some highlights, make it really bony. You can see I'm using a little bit of a, a stipply, stripey motion uh, because the details on there are very tiny, but we can fake it uh, by adding a little bit of texture in there. You will hit the tiny texture, and if you don't, it will still look like texture. And then finally, we do our normal basing. Mechanicus, standard gray, topped with an astro granite. Then we do a long beard gray dry brush. Then we do a Agrax Earthshade shade. Then we do another long beard gray dry brush. Bing bang boom, your bases are done. If you don't have the same stuff, you can still make it look similar or different. It's just as easy as that. Use what you got. All right, we got something special for you. We got a magic weapon here. <laughs> now you can see that this guy looks a little different. This is what I was talking about, you know, experimenting with guys. I wanted to make him look like the classic Hero Quest dude, so I painted him red. And I just did the same red I did for the capes. Red, white, highlight, boom, 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 done. So we're using Frost Heart <laughs> to do our uh, magic weapon base. We're doing a blue blue sword I guess yeah like it everybody does blue swords blue swords look cool that's a magic sword this is the easiest blue sword you're ever gonna you're ever gonna see 
this is the simplest way to get an effective magic weapon. You're gonna love it. So we just put that blue bottom coat on, let that dry. Oh, look, it's our friend Dollar Store White. <laughs> it's our cheap craft paint again. We're just gonna give it uh, an edge dry brush right now. Check that out. The top edge getting all dry brushy. And then we do an angled dry brush focused on the middle. And we just slowly feather out, slowly feather out. Come in with a little bit more, slowly feather out. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Slowly feather it out, focus on the middle, focus on the middle, come back with a little bit more, focus on the middle, focus on the middle, boom. Look at how simple that magic weapon was to do, and look at how effective it was. Anybody can do magic weapons now, anybody. Your grandma could do it, a baby could do it, a dog could do it, anybody could do it. You got no excuse now. I've, I've shown you the tricks, you're done. You're golden boy. All right, the final product. Check that out, right? Black armor, metallic style. Different from uh, a black Templar, right? Still just as cool. At least in my opinion, it's still just as cool. And he really pops, right? We, we see a lot of that red and black contrast on there. The weapon pops, it looks different. The shield pops, it looks different. The cape is different than the tabard. It, it really pops out. Here we can see the alternate sculpt. If you have the alternate sculpt, look at that. You can do the exact same stuff and have it look just as good. Now I did struggle with this one because the tabard doesn't go up into the midriff as much. What am I gonna do there? But hey, same steps, came out great. And look at that sword, magic sword, but using gray. It just, it just looks like a good non-metallic sword is done. We compare it, look at them. Look at that classic, classic red Chaos Warrior look. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Dread Warrior copyright. Check that out. Pretty rad, right? You could do that. Remember, that's just the same recipe as the cape. So if you wanted to do that, just do what you did for the cape on the armor. And then we got this kind of Punisher looking one. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. <laughs> I was just mixing it up, uh, testing out stuff. You can see the, the Punisher one, that's the recipe that I usually use for my Black Templars, right? That blue-black, it's pretty rad. Here's the paints up on the screen. Pause it if you want it, we got a couple of them. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments down below. We're back, baby! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, ring the little belly icon. Give me likes, give me give me dislikes. Tell me what you liked, tell me what you didn't like, what you want to see better, what you want to see, what you're painting. Tell me all that news, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.